While she was the Home Secretary, the now Prime Minister, Theresa May, was quite vocal in her opposition to encryption, citing concerns over national security and terrorism for her unrelenting desire to have continuous, ubiquitous spying on every citizen of the UK. Now, in light of the attack on Westminster, the current Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, has repeated calls for backdoor access into encryption standards, specifically WhatsApp, as apparently the attacker at Westminster sent a message on the service only a few minutes before driving his car into dozens of innocent people. See her talk about it here on The Andrew Marr Show. Now, what we do know is that there was a WhatsApp contact just before he launched the attack and if we knew what that contact was what he said and to whom we'd know a lot more but as i understand it i use whatsapp it's encrypted at both ends and if you if you tap on the whatsapp system it tells you that so you know that the security services you know the home office is never going to see what you do i've got i think i've got i can show you what it says here um, messages you send to this chat and calls are now secured with end to end encryption Tap for more intro info, and if you tap, it tells you you will be completely safe. Nobody will ever see. And that is what we, a lot of people think terrorists and others are using. Can I put it to you that that situation is now completely unacceptable? That is my view. It is completely unacceptable. There should be no place for terrorists to hide. We need to make sure that um, organisations like WhatsApp, and there are plenty of others like that, don't provide a secret place for terrorists to communicate with each other. It used to be that people would steam open envelopes uh, or just uh, listen in on phones when they wanted to find out what people were doing legally through warranty. But on this situation, we need to make sure that our intelligence services have the ability to get into situations like encrypted WhatsApp. So this is exactly the same argument that's going on between Apple and the FBI in, in Washington, where the Apple, Tim Cook of Apple, has um, so far said that they're not going to allow the American authorities to open a back door into their products. And yet if they don't do that, then this end-to-end -end encryption continues. So do you think that the British government and the American government have to take on the big uh, internet companies and force them to open up their devices? But if I was talking to Tim Cook, I would say to him, this is something completely different. We're not saying open up, we don't want to go into the cloud, we don't want to do all sorts of things like that, but we do want them to recognise that they have a responsibility to engage with government, to engage with law enforcement agencies when there is a terrorist situation. We would do it all through the carefully thought through, legally covered arrangements, but they cannot get away with saying we are a different situation. They are not. They are a different situation. This isn't about the right to digitally steam open a letter. This is asking a company to mathematically compromise their own product. The reach of the law is long indeed, but it does not have dominion over mathematics. If successful in her attempt, it opens the door to the government being able to get backdoor access not only to instant messaging services, exposing the intimate messages you send to your loved ones, but also other encrypted services, most notably online banking, and online commerce. Worse still, once encryption services are compromised, you can't control who has access to it, as this backdoor could be used by other people. It might not just be the British government, but perhaps foreign state actors such as Russia or China, as well as criminal groups and 300 pound men in their mother's basements. Compromised encryption is not really encryption at all. When SSL, another encrypted communication protocol, was discovered to contain a rather serious security flaw, the incident was referred to as Heartbleed, as it was essentially the security equivalent of drawing blood from the beating heart of the internet. Security teams all around the world worked around the clock to patch the service, racing against malicious actors who rapidly created and deployed malware to exploit this new vulnerability. Breaking end-to-end -end encryption in the way the UK government currently wants to do will have an even worse effect, as a patch will not be able to be deployed as any patch would remove government access. Information will become permanently compromised to anyone with relatively simple hacking skills. The effect would be devastating, not just in the UK, but globally. The security staff at the Home Office will know the obvious dangers of this policy. I know this for certain because I have personally spoken to several people in the past who have advised the Home Office on cybersecurity matters. The government is willfully ignoring the advice on security experts on this matter. This is of course to be expected. They do, after all, ignore the advice of experts on, say, the effects of recreational drugs and a number of other important issues. 
Worse still, it is not just the UK government that is demanding this. In a recent interview with BBC Newsnight, the former head of the CIA, John Brennan, echoed the call. Now, the British Home Secretary uh, says that the government should be given access to WhatsApp and other end-to-end -end encryption services. Do you think she's right? I think there needs to be a way for the government to work with these companies, such as WhatsApp, so that the government can carry out its responsibilities to protect society and to carry out the rule of law. And when there are these very sophisticated technologies, such as the unbreakable encryption, it really does impede the government's ability to protect its citizens. It is clear that the security services are not willing to accept the new reality of the digital age and are determined to try and spy on literally everyone and to try to control the flow of all information around the globe. Let us look at the stated aim of the government, the ability to detect terrorist attacks. Would putting a backdoor into encrypted commercial messaging services such as WhatsApp help them achieve this? Well, possibly, but not for very long. The reason being is that you can create a encrypted messaging services relatively easily. The software libraries required to do this are freely available and it does not take much programming experience to get something working that talks between a small group of people. Sure, it wouldn't look very pretty, but it would work. The real technical challenges only really arise when you want to make the service available to millions of people and also profitable. If you're listening to this as a potential terrorist, and for the love of God, I hope you are not, and it sounds like too much hassle to do all of this, then you could just use encrypted email. It is only moderately less convenient to use this than encrypted messaging, and the code required to implement unbreakable encryption over email is freely and easily available online. Most notably, PGP, pretty good privacy. Encryption is sophisticated mathematics, but it is not sophisticated technology despite what Amber Rudd and John Brennan might claim. Encryption here is for all and it is to stay. Mathematics does not care about your morality. This will not stop the UK government though, as thanks to section 253 of the Snoopers Charter, sorry, the Investigatory Powers Act, the Home Secretary can issue what's called a Technical Capability Notice or a TCN to a company which will legally obligate said company to create a backdoor into their software. The company could of course challenge this in court, but it is highly likely they will lose. TCNs enable the government to demand the following. A. Obligations to provide facilities or services of a specified description. B. Obligations relating to an apparatus owned or operated by the relevant operator. C. Obligations relating to the removal by a relevant operator of electronic protection applied by or on behalf of that operator to any communications or data. This point is particularly noteworthy as this would enable the government to legally mandate encryption to be removed from services used within the UK. D. Obligations relating to security of any postal or telecommunication services provided by relevant operators. And E obligations relating to the handling or disclosure of any information. As you have probably gathered by now, this basically allows the government to demand what the hell it likes from any technology company operating within the UK. The wording is incredibly vague and it is so deliberately. It is an absolute disgrace in my opinion that this act was passed and even that it had support from both the government and the opposition party. What's more, this can be done without any legislation or even a vote in parliament. Indeed, the only requirements to issuing a TCN are A. The Secretary of State considers that the notice is necessary for securing that the operator has the capability to provide any assistance which the operator may be required to provide in relation to any relevant authorization. B. The Secretary of State considers that the conduct required by the notice is proportionate to what is sought to be achieved by that conduct. C. The decision to give the notice has been approved by a Judicial Commissioner. Only public protests can dissuade the government from taking these sanctions now. If you are interested in making your voice heard on this issue, I highly suggest looking at the Open Rights Group. I've left a link to them in the description. They are, in my opinion, the best organisation in the UK for battling in favour of privacy and net neutrality, hands down. That's all for this video. Let me know your comments on this story in the section below, find me on minds.com and follow me there, and subscribe for more content coming soon. Crawling to my bed.